How to go from 30% down to 12% body fat, and I'm here to tell you why it is never too late. Too late is a mindset. Too late is you going, ah, you know what, yeah, I've had enough time, enough years of my life of jacking, of eating bullshit food, I'm just going to survive the rest till the day I die in this fat state. Get fucked, mate. That is a mindset, and it can absolutely be changed. It can be changed very, very quickly. Obviously, it's not going to be easy. The older you are, the more bad habits you've done for the longest period of time, the longer the limiting beliefs have been ingrained into your mind, and the more work I would have to do to get them back out, however it can be done, as seen in this video here. So I'm here to tell you that if you're in around the space of 40 plus, I think this guy was 50, exactly, he had his 50th birthday whilst on the transformation, it can absolutely be done and it is never too late and you should not settle for the current condition you have. You should strive for more. So hopefully in this video I can deliver the answers to you that you have been looking for. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tom Sergi and I run the Gorilla Bazoom. It's an online physique transformation program where we get results like this each and every week. My promise to you is by the end of this video you'll know how we went from 30% down to 12% body fat. I'm going to give you the tactics and also the underlining principles to get you to the goal, which I would say are the most important. This is what we're going to cover, the start point, the setup, how we made progress, and it was broken into two phases. And then I'm going to give you the answers and mindsets we used to quash limiting beliefs um, that were really holding him back in order to get towards the goal. So first, let's look at his start, starting point in the setup. 89 kg, 30% body fat. I know a lot of you, when I estimate a body fat, have a lot to say about this. So here you go. Scan your eyes, scan my decision, and let me know how close you think I was to the right percentage of body fat. I see a lot of human torsos and I think I'm quite accurate now. So starting food was sat at 2,170. You may think that's quite low and actually relative to his body uh, fat, this is not. This is actually as high as I could get it in order to see the drop off. But what we must understand is this guy was 49 at the time and 30% body fat. Now there must have been years of abuse to get to that point, and at that point, you know your metabolism slows down as you get older, the metabolism is going to be in the motherfucking bin. So at that point, my main mission is sure to shred off body fat. You need to be very tactful with the way you do this. If you just go to 1,600, 1,700 calories and think you're going to shred off loads of body fat, you will for a little bit, and then it will run out of steam real fast, because for the longest of time, to get to 30% body fat, probably having dead calories. Like there's not that much muscle mass on there, so it's not like it was big bulk and surplus. It was dead calories, time, year after year after year, and eventually you accrued a lot of body fat. So then reversing it needs to be done in the way I'm going to teach you uh, in this video here. So start food as high as you can get away with is the term I'll use here. And we started no messing with cardio, uh, formal cardio, 20 minutes per day. Heart rate 120 to 130 on something that's non-impact that isn't going to accumulate you fatigue or really spike the appetite. 10K steps as well. This is good for burning body fat for sure. And the heavier you are, the more calories you burn per uh, 1,000 steps. It's also very good for the mind and the routine as well. We opted for a four-day sp training split because that's A, what he had the time to do. Uh, and also he had a fair amount of training experience as well. I've spoken about this split on my channel many of times, but it's essentially where you do full body push, everything on the front of the body, a full body pull, everything on the back of the body, you repeat that times two, so you still get to stimulate the muscle twice per leg. It's, it's, the, it's the step up from a three-day split. So from there, this was phase one we went into, and we're going to speak about how we made progress. Uh, and this was not rapid, boys. You may think, and if you've watched any other transformation videos, like I, cr I can crank out results in, in 10 weeks if need be, but... Uh, uh, with this one, it actually was a little bit longer, and, and, and that's okay. It, it's not always going to be hell for leather to the end. I'm not an absolute miracle worker, although some of you may think so. It, some of these do take a little bit longer. Some of these, we do have limiting beliefs to break, and some of these, life does happen and get in the way. I thought this was relatively good progress. So we went 89 kg down to 80 kg over the course of 14 weeks. And you know what? From 89 down to 80, and you look at the two photos, I think he, looks, he, he was probably pretty happy at this point. Like, for sure, we can see, look at the body fat that was sat around the chest. Drastically, I mean, pretty much gone. He got a tattoo as well. That shows confidence. Chest fat had come in a lot. Midsection had come in a lot. Veins were starting to pop out and a bit more shape around the delts. So nice. Yeah, great great, great stuff. So phase one was, was, a, was a good part. And the reason why it wasn't an all the way through transformation needed broken up into phases is because I'm a human being, boys. Sometimes it's not necessary that we can push all the way through the transformation. Sometimes you will have things come up and we have to pull back, hold, go for a holding period, and then rinse, repeat, and go again. But in a weird way, when your metabolism's been in the bin for so long, it will serve you to run that holding period because you'll be more responsive when you do pull from food. Now, you can look at the weeks here. It took us 14 weeks. We can see the changes made. 
at no point can you see any pulling food. And as I said, I wanted to keep food high, but also I've got to keep output high at that point then. So we started with 20 minutes daily, that ran for two weeks, then we needed to pull the next lever to make a change. 30 minutes daily, that ran for two weeks again, and then we needed uh, to pull the lever and make a change. So 40 minutes daily. Then rather than going straight for another uh, to 50, we had time on our hands. I was like, let's push the steps. You're already running with 40 minutes of daily cardio from six weeks into the plan. I mean, fucking hell, you're going to be fit after this. And he was. For any of you that know the British Army, we have a parachute regiment. And the parachute regiment essentially run a civilian, or like 10 mile. It's one of the staple first tests you've got to do. But it's run for civilians uh, in North Yorkshire. By the time he was finishing the transformation, he was ready to go and crack off this and run it in a very respectable time. And that's because we, we were running with so much cardio for, so, for such a long period of time. So anyway, uh, we pushed steps up as well. At the time, he would have burned a fair amount of calories per thousand steps. But honestly, to, as we get leaner and leaner, it becomes less effective. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and then 50 minutes of cardio to push that last bit up, which lasted to about here, and then it started to need to ground to a halt, and then we then put the break in from there. So this was phase one. Then we rested for roughly, I think it was about five and a half weeks, uh, door date to date, and then we wanted to set into the next bit of progress, where I essentially just brought some of the cardio down and kept him eating that much amount of food. So still in a bit of a deficit, but enough food to drive that performance in the gym. We then transitioned into phase two, which lasted 11 weeks. Uh, firstly, we didn't need to make changes. So essentially, look at it like this. The plan he was on as he finished week 14, I put him straight back on that. Now, at this point, I started to get aggressive with the food because I wanted to take him from this point to where he ended up here. 200 calories straight off the diet. If you remember, he started on 2170. Uh, we then pulled 200 straight away. No change, no change. And then went aggressive again. Bang, another 187. Then I pushed his cardio six minutes daily. Didn't need change. Then it went 70 minutes daily. Pretty aggressive, right? No change. Last bit, last lever to pull, 100 calories off, bang. And then we got him down to this point here, which I was really, really impressed with how we finished with this. Like we can see veinage starting to come through. You can have a, a touch of loose skin as you get older. It's not going to tighten up the same, but 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 don't, don't be too concerned with that. Uh, if we look at this result here, very similar result. This guy maybe maybe a touch leaner, maybe it's just a lighting to be honest. But again, the skin here that's going to sit in this bar. Don't be concerned, boys. It's, it's not the end of the world. It's just a little bit of skin that hangs down below. Um, I was really happy with the way this finished. Like he was running like consistently good times. He was a lot stronger, injury free. Was digestion using food a lot better. And, and then we crystallized the transformation there, and it, it was really really good to see him finish and get this. Um, and now we enter that gaining phase. So that was how we actually did it. This was the tactics. Eat this, then change this, then do this, which I think is important. And uh, I've done videos in the past where I've kind of not spoke specifics and you guys prefer those specifics. So be sure to, to see those going in there. But what's, honestly, what's, what's, I can give you the tactics, boys. If you ignore this, you'll fuck it up. I can tell you right now. And I don't say that to be abrasive. I say it because it's true. Like, honestly, the, the transformations are won and lost in breaking limiting beliefs. So for, for many times you would say, oh, it's tough. Oh, it's hard, this. And sh of course it is. I'm, I'm not stupid. Of course it's hard, tough. Of course it's hard. But the response I would always give him is be excited to show the world your discipline. And it's actually a book, a statement out of this very book that's on my desk. This is uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, where he says, be excited to showcase the discipline you know. And I think that's quite cool because it's almost being like, be excited to show the world you are disciplined. I have been waking up at like 3.45 and I thought, you know what, fuck it. Took my phone and outside there is the light, street lights are on, right? It's dark inside my room, street lights are on. Snap, tag on Instagram, new, new routine in full swing. I've been doing it for like four days or so. But like, it's, you're excited to showcase discipline. You know, no one likes to get up, at, get up at that fucking time. Of course you don't. But when you're showcasing the world, you are disciplined. It gives you that second win to be like, yeah, that's a motherfucker, I am disciplined. Yeah, this is kind of hard, but I'm hard. And that, that's how you want to sink your way into it. But if you don't, you're going to think, fucking hell, I'm starving. Fucking hell, cardio. Oh, God, I've got to do this again. And it will grate on you. But as soon as you turn the mindset off, like, I am that guy. I am a disciplined individual. And the world's going to egg me on anyway. Stuff becomes a hell of a lot easier, boys. The next thing we'll say is, you would always say, I'm tight for time. No one's tight for time. We all have the same amount of time within a given day. You will make time. 
you will order your priorities and you will make time. The problem why people say I don't have time is they don't make time for themselves. Most people are happy just giving no time to themselves and just wait, either A, wasting it or spending it on other things that just aren't really moving the needle. Most of you, it would serve you just to sit down after this video, look at your wall and just think, where am I wasting time? A very quick way you can do this is take your phone and go onto the uh, screen time and that'll tell you where you're wasting time very, very quickly. Look at the people you're hanging around with and see is anyone really adding value or, or just pulling you back. That's another way to, to, to work out some, some time. But just look at your life and think, what am I doing that's wasting time and holding me back? And I guarantee you, you can muster up two hours out of your day. I guarantee there's two hours in your day where you've been do you've done some bullshit that if, if your life was a TV show, I would be fucking bored watching it. Imagine you are in the screen and I'm sat there watching you from a camera inside your room or whatever room you go through or your car or it's behind you when you're walking down the street. I guarantee you there is time where I would be so fucking bored thinking, what is this guy doing? He's been led on his phone for fucking 30 minutes scrolling. Like he's going to do anything entertaining for us to watch. You must almost look at your life like that. A bit of a movie character where you're, you're, you're doing stuff and it's like, fucking hell, I remember we did this cool thing and like it was funny or it was like hard or it was, do you know what I mean? You, you want something like that. And if, the, you, if you were to look at your own life and think, fucking hell, it's boring. I'm not really, if you're not proud to tell people what you've been doing because it sounds fucking boring, it's probably a waste of time, right? So, so, so I can give you time straight away back. But you have to understand and be an open mind to be like, don't need that. We can put it into something else, which is steps cardio or prepping your meals, boys. Next thing to say is I'm happy now versus I want the best for myself. And what, this goes back to uh, this for sure. Great progress. 9 kg down, looks infinitely better. For sure, he should be happy. 100% he should be happy. However, is that you wanting the best for yourself? Is that the best you've got? Is that what you deserve? Because if it is, fine, stay there. But I guarantee for most of you, you would say, no, 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 I deserve more. If I said to you, how much money should you make? You would say, more. I deserve more. Well, in this analogy, I would say, are you lean enough? The answer would be no, I want more. And that's what it needs to be. Because for the moment you accept average to poor standards, that's what you're going to get. But you're not going to get that. You're going to get just below it. Whatever you accept, you will end up with just a little bit lower than. Because it's very hard to get something and stay exactly at that. We're either progressing slightly or regressing slightly in most things in life. We're like the stock market. It never runs completely in a flat line. It's either up or it's either down ever so slightly or very, very aggressively. So the moment you accept something that's slightly subpar, just know it's not going to say subpar and you're not going to be happy with it anyway. You may as well suffer a bit longer and get to the actual end product and end result. So, and it just comes down to self-respect. If you don't respect yourself enough, you'll settle for subpar. Of course you will. Most motherfuckers do this with their partners. You'll settle for subpar and, and, and you'll, you'll be like, oh, well, yeah, she's all right. But motherfucker, you only get one life. You only get one life. So you may as well get the absolute best you can for yourself. And when it comes to a physique, you may as well push it as hard as you possibly can do to look the best you possibly can. And then the last thing is, uh, I had to eat out. I had to go and do this. I had to. Had to. No, 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 no. You must understand, you are where you are in life right now because of your own doing. There is no I had to. You made the decision you went and did exactly what you wanted to do in that example. There is no I had to. Well, this is rounds being fired at your face and you had to move, fine. But in most analogies, across most aspects of our life, we are where we are in life because of our own doing. For every accolade I have in my life, that's down to me. But for every wrongdoing, for every shortcoming, that's also on me and I better fucking fix it. Otherwise, I can't complain about it if it's not... Um, I can't put that onto someone else because the moment you do, you outsource. You outsource of where you are in life to somebody else. You're out of control, and you are like a baby that needs fucking feeding that can't talk and can only cry. That'd be an awful situation to be in. If I, if you were to now be a baby, like you, everything you know now, but I shrink you into a baby and you can't talk and you can only like cry or wave your arms when you're hungry. That'd be pretty awful because you know what you want to say because you have the brain power of what you got now, but you can't say it or do anything like. That'd be pretty bore, pretty. Pr that it'd be awful. Of course it would. Knowing what you know now, well, this is what most people do when they outsource their factor of it's not my fault. It is your fault. Everything is your fault. You are where you are in life because of your own doing. And this is the hardest one to really wrap your head around. But the moment you do, it should not feel bad. It should feel liberating. Very, very liberating. Oh, 
everyone that's where I want to be kind of just noticed this, accept this, and then did something with it. And, and that's what you're going to do. So these were the four longest lever mindsets we worked through to get ultimately to this result. These were the tactics and habits uh, that we changed in order to get to the result as well. This was the start point. This was what I promised we would cover. This was the end result of the video. And these are my results as well. <laughs> and this is how things finished up. So it's never too late. If you found value in this video, subscribe. If you want to work with me, uh, there'll be a link in the description. Book a call. Apart from that, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.